Hello and welcome back to Jimbo's PC Builds. Today it's time to add another cooler to the Cooler League. So without further ado, let's have a look at the cooler that we're going to add. Today we're going to add the ID Cooling SE226-XT. Whew, a long name. Oh, it's black. It's very black. Yeah, you like that? It even says black on it. Now, in all seriousness, this is a decent cooler, it co um, or it looks a decent cooler anyway. Um, it costs forty-eight dollars from Amazon, so a pretty good price. It's not one of the more expensive coolers that I've looked at so far. Um, so, without further ado, let's get the cooler on the test bed and do that testing. So, on to the install. So install wise, it's about the same as the Dark Rock 4. Um, it's a very similar mounting mechanism for, um, uh, for either LGA 1700 or LGA 15, whatever it is, or LGA 1200 or whatever, or whatever. It's um, a black plate with uh, the four screws that come through the holes in the board, which you then put standoffs on, um, and then you screw like two metal bars to it, and then you mount the cooler on that of course putting thermal paste on and that's the pretty similar deal for both those sockets the only difference between the two is the standoffs are different as you can see here I've got a little bag where you can see it says LGA 1700 on it they're the standoffs that you need to use when installing an LGA 1700 otherwise you use the standoffs that you use for any other install for AMD I've not done the install but I read, I read through the manual and by the way the actual manual is pretty decent. It was very, very easy to follow, which is highly unusual with these coolers. Um, but it looks like a relatively uh, simple install. You retain the black plate um, that you get with the AMD motherboard, and then you screw uh, through standoffs into the holes of the, of the uh, back plate, and then you mount two curved bars on it, and then it's the same as the uh, Intel uh, install at that point. So not the most difficult install, the one thing I would say that was a little bit disappointing and, you know, I, I was literally um, a bit, well, but then keeping in mind the price difference, with the um, Dark Rock 4, you need to use a long screwdriver and they actually provide you with a long screwdriver, which is really cool. For this cool, that you need also a long screwdriver, but they do not provide you with one. So if you do not have one, you may find yourself in spot of bother when trying to install this cooler. Luckily, I had the one that was provided with the Dark Rock 4, so for me, that was okay. For you, you need to keep that in mind, and you may actually need to buy a long screwdriver, which is a bit of a pain in the bum. All right, so that's my thoughts on the install. Without further ado, let's get on with looking at the scores, and then after that, I'll give you my final thoughts. So base temps for the ID cooler. It got a base temp of 30 degrees, which is pretty much in line with a lot of the other coolers, including the Vitro V5, the Be Quiet Dark Rock 4, 
and the Scythe Humor 2 and it's a lot it's lower than quite a few others. Bass sound. It did very well with the bass sound. It came in at 34 decibels which is it's it's not the top performer but it's second which is pretty good going. Cinebench score. The ID Cooler got a score of over 4850. In fact I think it was 4875 which is a huge score and puts it well ahead of all the others. Uh, it's, it seems like a bit of an anomaly but I, this is an average score and it's over quite a few runs and it did very very well so the data is there. As I've mentioned earlier before I went through the scores all testing is done in a temperature controlled room so it's not like the conditions favoured um, the ID cooler in any way it just did very well it was able to maintain temperatures with not a lot of sound and it was able to get maximum performance out of the CPU so basically it finished top of the pile and here's a good reason why because as you can see it max temp wise it's right up there with the top coolers that I've seen so far it's second behind the Cooler Master Hyper 212 and max sound it's basically joint third and there's not much in it. I think it reached, uh, the average is about 38 decibels, which if you think of the difference between its base of 34 and its max of 38, there's not much in it at all. Scoring ranges are staying the same as they are, made no changes since the last test I did, which I think was the Scythuma 2. And here we are at the league table. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new leader. Basically, the price of this cooler at $48 means that it got a really good score on price. The ease of install was similar in line with the likes of the Be Quiet cooler. The design and, and build and quality of it was in line with those coolers as well. But that average score with the performance it got out, the uh, uh, Core i7, has basically given it the lead by one point above those group, that group of coolers. So uh, excellent performance. All right, now we've gone through the scores, I'll give you my final thoughts. So as you saw from the scores, we have a new leader in the scoring league. The cooler performed very, 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 very well. Um, you know, the, the temperature was good, the sound was good. Um, as I mentioned during the scores, the, 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 the temperatures came out really well. The room that I have it in, because of the lights and everything else, is a temperature controlled room, which is at 72 degrees, so this cooler gets no extra performance because it's now a bit cooler it's winter but still because I'm controlling the temperature of the room it didn't get any performance bonus because of that so what you got out of it was what you get from the cooler so an excellent result all round so you know would I recommend this cooler at $48 absolutely the only pitfall is that lack of screwdriver that you need to keep in mind but otherwise if you've got a, a cool if you've got a CPU that needs a decent cooler like an i7 or even an i9 or maybe a uh, AMD 5950X, this cooler won't let you down. I think it will do a really good job. All right, I hope you found that information useful. Please toss a like on the video. Um, and also don't forget to leave any comments if you've got any questions about the cooler or any other coolers I've tested so far. Um, please don't forget to subscribe. Trying to head towards that magic 1,000 subscribers so I can actually let YouTube pay me for all this video work I'm doing. Because at the moment they, I get nothing from them and they get adverts on my videos, but hey, is what it is. All right, enough griping and moaning and us asking for you for something. But as always, take care. <laughs>